Hello, I'm Nis Tilson. In this video, I'd like to show you how to work with plinths in Polyboard. Plinths are also called toe kicks or kicks frames. And here's an example of a sideboard that has a plinth on the front, sides and back, and each plinth has had decorative cutout applied to it. So let's see how we can set this up very quickly and simply in Polyboard. Here's our base cabinet with no plinth underneath it. Let's put a plinth underneath the cabinet by going into its properties and here we have elevation of the plinth. Let's put 100 millimeters underneath. Our base cabinet has been raised up 100 millimeters from the zero level. So we now have underneath our cabinet a virtual volume where we can start adding elements. If I put the mouse underneath the cabinet in virtual volume, we can see that the volume goes pink. If I click right, I can now open the Add Plinths menu. We can see that we have some boxes that we can tick so that we can tick a box and say, I want a plinth on the front. I can give it a recess and I can do the same for the back, left and right sides. We can notice that in this particular cabinet, the bottom is actually assembled with a mitre joint to the sides. What would happen if the bottom was not assembled with a mitre joint, but was assembled between the two sides, that is underpassing the two upright sides. Let's just get rid of that plinth that I just added. And now let's say that if I select the bottom and it's linked to the left side, instead of having a mitre joint, let's put it underpassing. And the right side the same, I'm going to put the right side underpassing. So we can see now that the sides actually go over, pass over the bottom. Now if I go underneath in the plinth area and I click right and I click the add plinths menu, I can see that I have a tick box for the front and the back, but I do not have any tick box for the left and the right sides that I cannot put a plinth on the left or the right side if bottom of my cabinet is not overpassing the sides. So let's put the bottom of our cabinet overpassing our sides. Cancel my plinth box. I'm going to click the bottom of my cabinet on the right and the left side. Instead of underpassing, I'm going to put overpassing, right side, overpassing. And now if I click underneath my cabinet and I put add plinths, we can see we've got a tick box for the front, back, left and right side, like when we had a mitre joint. Let's put a plinth on the front and set it back 20 on the back. I'm going to leave it flush on the left, set it back 20, on the right, set it back 20. And we can see that Polyboard automatically put in plinths all around our cap bottom of our cabinet, and the plinths are assembled with mitres. So we look in 3D, how it goes. Here we have our plinths. Okay, now let's see how we do the decorative cutout. Let's just um, explode our cabinet and so we can select the individual items easier. If I click on the front and I go into plinth structure edit and I go into inner tooling, I'm going to add an inner tooling, sort of a, a cutout onto my plinth. I'm going to choose a, an ellipse. I'm going to say the horizontal axis is at 1,100 millimeters long, vertical axis 185 millimeters high, and I'm going to say that panel reference is going to be the bottom midpoint of my panel, and I want the Y position at zero, and that will give me my cutout. So you see the cutout is actually half of my ellipse here. So if I click OK, I've actually cut that out. I can now click on that plinth, Click right and in the menu choose copy structure. Go onto the back plinth and click right and choose paste structure. And now I have the same structure on my two plinths, front and back. Let's also cut out the side here, side plinth. I'm going to do exactly the same. Inner tooling, added ellipse. Let's say that the width of this one is 230. And let's say that vertical axis is 185 like the other one. And let's say that the panel reference is also the bottom with the Y value at zero, so it's cut out like this. I click OK, and let's copy that, the same thing, copy this structure onto the other side, paste the structure, and here we have our cabinet set up with its plinths. So what happens if we change the priority of our bottom? Let's change the priority of our bottom so that it's actually between our sides that is underpassing the left side instead of being overpassing let's put it underpassing and the right side too let's put it underpassing 
You can see what polyboard's done, in fact, is that it's eliminated the plinths as soon as we've changed the priority of the bottom. So how do we get now a plinth or a, uh, a panel on the end of our cabinet if we wanted absolutely our bottom to be between our sides? Well, the idea is we go in the volume, click right, and instead of adding add a plinth, because if I choose add a plinth there, it's not possible to put left and right plinth. Instead of choosing add a plinth, I add an upright. And I put one upright and I choose a distance from the left and I put in the value zero. A polyboard has now added the a board to the left side. Going into the volume again and put an upright and I tick right and I put zero from the right, polyboard added the plinth on the right side. And now I can actually cut these out in exactly the same way. I can do an inner tooling, add an ellipse, add this ellipse of a horizontal axis of 200, shall we say, and 185, same height, and from the bottom, zero. Go into here and copy this structure, explode my cabinet so I can select the easier the plinth here. I'm going to paste that structure on the plinth. And now we have the same thing, but with our bottom panel here between, that is non-priority, to the sides. It's important to note is that the front plinth to the side plinths are now butt jointed. They are not mitre jointed. You cannot mitre joint them now. Let's go a bit further in our project and say that we would like this cabinet to be resting on a framed plinth, a sort of a frame so that we would like the bottom structure of the plinth area here to be an autonomous structure. And we will need to put across some reinforcing battens going across from the front to the back. How would we do this? Let's go into our cabinet edit mode here. Let's go into our plinth volume here, click right, and we can see that we can add elements to it. We can add uprights, shelves, double backs. Let's start by adding a shelf. Let's put this shelf in at, from the top of this volume, put this shelf in at say 30 millimeters from the top. And let's make this shelf now a nil panel. So we don't have a real shelf. It's just a virtual shelf, which creates a a separate volume inside the plinth volume. Let's go into this separate volume now. If I go into this separate volume, go into here, and let's go and let's click in this separate volume, this plinth volume here, and I click right, and now let's add some uprights, and let's add, say, two uprights. We can see that we've added our two battens here, and our two battens are actually three centimeters high which is quite good to reinforce the plinth structure. But we can see that, uh, in fact, they are actually now protruding below the cutout here, which is not exactly what we want. So let's go back into our cabinet edit mode and let's take the distance of this one here. Let's move it towards the left a bit and let's put it at 200 millimeters from the left. Let's put this one here at also 200 millimeters from the right. And now let's see what our structure looks like. And now we can see that the, the two battens here are nearly hidden, not quite. But let's, let's hide them by changing a little the cutout on the front here. Let's just change the cutout. Let's take the, the front here. Let's edit the inner tooling. And instead of 185, let's put in 170. And now we can see that the, the battens are completely hidden by the front plinth.